Beloved community, this is Emory University's Protestant worship service for the Emory community. My name is Maddie Henderson, and I am the Christian chaplain here at Emory in the Office of Spiritual and Religious Life. And I am thrilled to be here today, not only to celebrate this great day, but this is our first worship back after the break. So I am just pumped to be back together in worship with y'all. The name of our community, Beloved Community, is an allusion to Dr. King's vision. The Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change described Dr. King's vision saying, the beloved community was for King a realistic, achievable goal that could be attained by a critical mass of people committed to and trained in the philosophy and methods of nonviolence. Dr. King's beloved community is a global vision in which all people can share in the wealth of the earth. In the beloved community, poverty, hunger, and homelessness will not be tolerated because international standards of human decency will not allow it. Racism and all forms of discrimination, bigotry, and prejudice will be replaced by an all-inclusive spirit of sisterhood and brotherhood. In the beloved community, international disputes will be resolved by peaceful conflict resolution and reconciliation of adversaries instead of military power. Love and trust will triumph over fear and hatred. Peace with justice will prevail over war and military conflict. In this beloved community at Emory University, we hope to play a role in bringing Dr. King's realistic, achievable goal to fruition. And I thank you for being here today as we celebrate that. Today, our guest preacher is Reverend Tolton Pace. He is a double eagle, having graduated from the college and the School of Public Health. He was a member of Voices of Inner Strength Gospel Choir while he was here as a student. If you are a Voices alum, raise your hand. Any Voices alums? In okay, and now members, raise your hand. Y'all will need to meet each other. He recently completed a two-year term as co-president of the Caucus of Emory Black Alumni and previously served as Emory's College Assistant Dean of Admissions and Director of Multicultural Recruitment. Reverend Pace currently serves as Manager in strategic of Strategic Partnerships and Grant Programs for the Home Depot Foundation, where he leads philanthropic strategy and investments in Atlanta and across the country. So we thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing your gifts with the Emory community. And at this time, I would like to invite up our current Voices members to lead us in worship today.
think everybody knows that. I know Mick said she should do it. <laughs> <laughs> they can help me sing it. Our first reading is from 1 Chronicles um, chapter 4, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, the great divine, God who is greater than all gods, we turn to you to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to embrace a new year. Thank you for the opportunity to use our, our talents, gifts, and abilities in the service of your will to foster a beloved community, not only within the walls of this chapel, but to also respond to your call for us to exhibit and embody the beloved community in our daily lives and with all that we come into contact with throughout this semester and for the time to come. Be there for all of us while reminding us in every way that we are safe in your arms as we courageously step out on faith to live, serve, learn, and engage all in loving manner that turns all hearts, minds, and spirits back to you. Be with us as we transition from the past year that we're all divinely yours, and you've purposed all of us with a goal as we matriculate through Emory University. Be there closely with us in a way we can feel your presence in all things. We ask for these things and praise your name in advance because there's nobody greater than you. Amen. Well, this 
Spirit is in this place this morning. Even the piano's moving. So um, at this time, we are going to enter our time of passing of the peace. And here at Beloved Community, each week we issue a challenge to learn something new about someone in the room during this time of the passing of the peace. There are a lot of new faces. Some may be old friends that you're seeing for the first time in years and you get to catch up. And so at this time, I invite you to stand to learn something new about someone in the room and greet each other with the peace of God. Let us stand.
everyone for participating. Thank you everyone for participating in this moment of worship. Communal worship is my favorite part of worship. My favorite type of worship, I should say. This time I'm gonna invite um, Joshua Vai up, one of our senior leaders, to do our second reading. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joshua. And uh, today's reading is from Mark 9, 14 through 29. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has been robbed him of speech. Whenever it sees him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I ask your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they cannot. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked, asked the boy's father, how long has been like this? How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. After Jesus has gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let's give a warm hand for all of our student participants today. So for all of my alums who are present, you, you remember these times? Right? Yeah, just by show of hands. Mm -hmm. Or doing anything on campus where you had to either get up and speak or do some kind of presentation. Yeah, any, any fond or not so fond memories, either way, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, so great to be with y'all this morning. Uh, give yourselves a round of applause for just being present today, amen? Yes, yes, there is uh, no place like no place like home. Uh, man, it's just so grateful to see all these amazing faces, uh, familiar faces from our time in school together, uh, newer, fresher faces that I've met in the past couple of years through Voices and, and SEBA and some other activities, and then community folks who've come out to share today as well uh, for this beloved community worship experience. I see family still coming in. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Come on in, y'all. Any seat's a good seat. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. Welcome. Y'all say hey to my family. Hey, y'all. Welcome to the community. Scattering. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good. Good deal. Awesome, awesome. I've got some Impact family. So I belong to Impact Church in East Point, Georgia. Got some Impact family who came out today. So thank y'all for being present as well. 
are amazing. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, man, I always want to just, you know, take a moment to, to give flowers, right, uh, while we can. Uh, we know that life is sweet, uh, yet short, uh, depending on how you look at it. And so I always love to acknowledge folks uh, while we have the opportunity. So, again, thank you to all of my fellow alums here today, particularly those MLK scholars who are here today as well. Uh, amen. Yeah, we had a, a breakfast this morning before worship. So thank you all so much. Uh, to Carol Henderson, indebted, thank you so much. Yes. For your presence, for your work, uh, for all things diversity, equity, inclusion uh, here at Emory and beyond. Uh, we're grateful for you and the time that you put here in, at Emory. So thank you so much, Carol. Appreciate that. Amen. And not to be left out, my good friend Nicole hanging out in the cut up there as well, working a part of that DEI team and all things alumni. So thank you for all that you've done as well, uh, going back to, to the nursing school and beyond, right? So uh, you're just a, a part of this Emory fabric. So we appreciate you and your presence as well. So uh, Maddie, Dean Greg, uh, Maury, Office of Spiritual and Religious Life, everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you for your presence and for your prayers today. So. Pray with us as we walk through this experience together. Is that all right? Can we do that? Yeah? Amen. Amen. All right. Well, are y'all ready to dig into the word today a little bit? Yeah? Excellent. Excellent. So we're going to share this scripture on the screen again that we just read for emphasis today. And uh, we're going to highlight a couple verses that we'll focus in on. Is that all right? Yeah? Awesome. Awesome. I'm a storyteller. I like stories. So I thought this was a phenomenal story. And God dropped this into my spirit. Uh, one, uh, what we're going to talk about today in our three points. Uh, is that it, it's become a family model for this year. It is our family's motto for 2023. Uh, and so I hope that you might find some value in it, uh, that God might share something or nudge you a little bit in what we share today uh, that you might take with you and adopt as your own as well. So let's go back to that verse that we just shared on the screen, Matthew 14, uh, starting at verse uh, 22. I'm sorry, not Matthew, uh, Mark, that is, Mark. And we'll start at verse 14. So Mark 9, verse 14. Good. All right. We'll read from the New Living Translation. You are welcome to follow along here or whatever version you have there in front of you. So it says, when they came together or to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. And as soon as all the people saw Jesus, uh, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. And a man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. Anybody ever been paralyzed by a situation before? Be it emotionally, physically, or otherwise? I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. And when the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? The father answered, from childhood. It has often thrown him into the fire or the water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. Anybody ever had to ask Jesus for help before? <laughs> amen, amen. If you can, said Jesus. Some versions say, what do you mean, if you can? Everything is possible for one who believes. Y'all say believe this morning. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Whew, what a powerful moment. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. 
Now, after Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. This kind can come out only by prayer. So for a few minutes this morning, uh, God would love to just share with us and talk to us about this statement. To be or not to be. To be or not to be. Shakespeare would say that is the question. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Amen. Y'all pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for as your word says, it's the day that you've made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. God, we thank you for this gathering of friends, family, loved ones, alums, a community, a beloved community who is here to worship together and to hear from you today. God, we pray that you speak to us, speak through us in a way that only you can, that we might walk out differently than we came in. God, your servant's prayer is that the words of my mouth, of all of our mouths, and the meditation of all of our hearts would be acceptable in your sight. For indeed, God, you are our strength and our redeemer. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name, amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> to be or not to be, that is the question, amen? That's what Shakespeare would say, that is the question. So you've heard this phrase before, how many of you heard this phrase before? To be or not to be, right? People toss it around, right? When certainly in your English class, you may study that a little bit. And scholars have debated over time what this phrase actually means. What does it mean to be or not to be, Erica? Who knows, right? But there's been some consensus, some agreement, some settling on the fact that to be or not to be simply means this, to live or not to live. That's the question. In the midst of life circumstances and situations and all the things that we find ourselves in, are you going to live or are you going to pull back and not live? Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That means have it to the, what, full, a complete life. So I would argue and submit to you today that when we're thinking about that question, to be or not to be, I would say be. I would challenge you to, to be and to live because Jesus came so that you could do, in fact, just that. To have a full, complete life robust, exciting, overflowing, effervescent life that you've never even imagined possible before. Y'all say be. Y'all say live. live. So that's the question we're going to wrestle with just a little bit today. Whether you are deciding what your major is going to be, whether you're deciding what grad school is going to look like, whether you're deciding if I need to pivot or change my career or my job, whether you're deciding to expand or grow your family and have more kids, whether you're deciding like us, whether we're going to buy a new house over here or over there, to be or not to be, to live or not live, that is the question. I want to challenge you in all those decisions. Y'all live. Y'all live. Y'all go after it. Y'all go get it. Y'all make it happen. Amen? Amen? Let's see what he's talking about. Let's see, let's see. So on King Weekend, oftentimes we talk about dreams. Amen? Dr. King and King's dream. And I'm excited, Carol, that, that we're here today in a beloved community worship experience because that was a part of King's dream, to see and witness and to experience the beloved community where folks could worship together, where folks could be educated together, where folks could fellowship and dine and sup together, folks could go to school together. That was the dream, amen? So what about your dreams? What about my dreams? What about our dreams that God has placed in our heart? I think we should indeed live into our dreams. Amen? Are we going to take God up on his promise of a full life or not? I think he's got some great things in store for us. As the scripture says, more eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for those who love him, those who are called according to his purpose. God's got some great things stored up for each and every single one of us today. Amen? So let's do this. Let's take a look at these three things quickly here. Three B's, as I call them. We said to be or not to be. So we've got three B's, B-E today. Amen? That I believe God would have us to look at, to challenge us as we go through life 
And that's the question God's putting before us today. Y'all ready? Here we go. The first point is this. Y'all say with me. Say, believe. Oh, yeah. Let's try that again. Believe. And then we'll put it all together. Believe. And in case somebody missed it, turn to your neighbor as we did in the Old School Church and say, believe. That's right. That's right. In life's moments where we're deciding to be or not to be, to live or to not live, to declare or pursue the dreams that God has placed on our hearts, God is telling us to believe, Bree. Believe. Verses 23 through 24 says it like this. It says, it has often thrown him into the fire, going back to the little boy, or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, take pity on us and help us. If you can, Jesus said. What do you mean if you can? Everything is possible for the one who does what? Believe. Believes. And immediately, not tomorrow, not a few minutes back, it said what? Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help my unbelief. So Jesus is telling the boy's father, and I think he's telling us today that in our pursuit of the dreams that God has for us, we've got to do step one, and that's to do what? Believe. 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 Everything is possible for someone who believes. Now, did Jesus say some things? No. Did he say one thing in your life? No. Did he say two things or things on Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Did he say things first semester or second semester students? No, did he say freshman year versus senior year? We said everything is possible for those who believe. Everything, even in the midst of stuff that the enemy tries to send to take you out, God says, guess what? It's still possible. Even when the enemy tries to discourage you and disrupt you and take you off the path that God has you on, God says, guess what? Believe. It's still possible. Believe. We've got evidence in the verse today where it says, it has often thrown the boy into the fire or the water to kill him. Anybody had any situations that tried to take you out? Mm. From the classroom to the boardroom to the car to the house to the job. There's some stuff that comes our way, amen? Situations that try to slow you down. Situations that try to defer your dream. Situations that have literally tried to take you all the way out. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> but God. Come on, baby, Cho. Say it. But God. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I love how the word says that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Didn't say it wouldn't come. Didn't say it wouldn't try. But guess what? It won't succeed. It won't succeed. We read it in the verse today. It said that evil spirit tried to throw the boy in the water, tried to put him in fire, but guess what? The boy's still alive, amen? Somebody say believe. believe. I love it this way. Belief is rooted in faith. Y'all say faith. faith. In Hebrews 11:6 6 says it like this, Matt. It says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Mm. Mm. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly or diligently seeks him. I got any God seekers in the house today? Anybody want to go after God like never before? Any God chasers, as Tommy Tinney would say back in the day? Come on now. It says it right here. If you earnestly, diligently go after God, then guess what? He will reward your faith. He will reward your belief. So if we run after God, we believe, God shows up, God rewards, God blesses, God takes care of us in spite of things that are happening around us. Amen? Mm. Faith and believing are the key to unlocking all that God has in store for us. If you've got a little something to take this down on your phone, your tablet, your writing, I want to just give you this quick acronym as we close this point about believe. You've heard some of these before. Maybe you haven't. Yes, baby Cho. Mm -hmm. All right. Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. Faith is a feeling that all is through him. Feeling all, feeling that all is through him. This next familiar one says, forsaking all, I trust him. Forsaking all, I trust him. 
And then this last one I love, it says, finally aimed, I touch heaven. When you get aligned with God's plan for your life, when you get aligned with God's word, and you begin to spend time and, 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 and cultivate that relationship with God, you get aimed, you get locked in, and you're able to touch heaven like never before. Amen? Yeah. Somebody say, believe. 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 So that's our first point for today. We won't be before you long. Amen? Amen. Point number one. Point two is this. Y'all say, be bold. Be bold. Yeah, yeah. Say it one more time. Be bold. Be bold. Let's look at that point. So in life's moments where we're deciding to be or not to be, to live or not live, to declare and pursue the dreams that God has placed in our heart, God is telling us to be bold. Now, when I was here, I guess it was 2021, Maddie, homecoming, we actually talked about this same concept of being bold and going after the things that God would have in store for us like never before. Let's, let's look at it. Verse 25 from today says it like this. It says, when Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter into him again. See, when Jesus saw that the crowd was coming to the scene, it was a perfect moment, Mari, for witnessing to happen. For him to show how you should operate in faith and in situations that might seem too big for you to handle. Anybody ever gotten in over your head before? Didn't know how you were going to get out? Didn't know, I don't know what this resolution is going to be. I don't know when the refund check's going to hit the account, but God, I'm trusting you. Amen? So Jesus shows us in this moment how to speak over your life. Jesus shows us how to declare some things over your life, like victory, mm -hmm. like health, mm -hmm. finance, prosperity, amen? How to say, not today, Satan. Mm -hmm. Not today. I love the boldness of Jesus in this verse. He could have spoken softly. All right, Spirit, come on out of there. He could have done it in a whisper. Sheree, he could have did his hand like this said spirit move. But he spoke boldly and confidently and convincingly to the spirit, not just for the sake of the moment, but for the sake of those who were watching so that they would know how to speak life over themselves and others that they might be around. Amen? Amen? The boldness of Jesus, because the scripture says it like this, Jamal, the power of life and death is in the what? The tongue. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over your situation. Speak life over that final exam. Speak life over that business presentation. Speak life over that application for the fellowship. Speak life over that application for the business license to start your own thing. Speak life. Jesus rebuked the spirit. That's a powerful word to rebuke something. Mm -hmm. To call it to come out. It says, Jesus said, I command you. They say I ask you politely or gingerly or gently. I command you to come out. And then he said, never enter into him again. He said, no, you just take a little vacation and you can come back when I'm gone like in two weeks. But he said, never enter into him again. So why don't you take like 10 seconds and think about a situation that might be in your life right now. Family situation, financial situation, a fitness or a health situation in your body. Whatever that thing is that might be happening in and around your world right now, what's something that you could speak life over, even at this very moment? Even at this very moment. Begin whispering that thing to God. Just take a couple seconds and do that right now. Whatever it is, maybe you're worried about that grade that's coming out. Maybe you're worried about a newborn or a niece or a nephew or cousin or auntie or uncle or grandparent. Somebody battling with this illness or that illness. Maybe it's the diagnosis that What's that thing that might seem like it's just a little too big for you to handle, but with God, you can speak to that thing and cause it to move. I have faith the size of a mustard seed. I can move mountains. I can say to that mountain, move, and it be cast into the sea. Speak life. Speak life. Amen? Amen. Now, some might say, well, you know, Pastor T, told and that, that's great. That was, that was Jesus doing the talking, right? That, that was all him. You know, how, how, how can I be as bold as Jesus, right? 
Well, there's a story in the word that I love as we kind of kind of close this point here about being bold, about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, and it's a very familiar passage of scripture that talks about this woman who comes up through a crowd. Amen. I'm going I'm to do a little demonstration. I'm going to walk out here. That's all right. I'm a demonstrative preacher. All right. If I could get this front row to stand up, you stay seated with the baby. Don't move. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to get y'all to stand up for me real quick. All right. Just kind of huddle right here, right? Y'all huddle here. Mari, I'm going to borrow you to come on down for a second. All right. All right. And Mari, you can just kind of stand in the center of him there, right? And y'all just picture this crowd. We're going to magnify this crowd, let's just say, by a hundred times. Right? So just imagine with me your spiritual eye, your spiritual imagination, that there are lots of people thronging around our, our Jesus prototype just for today. Amen. <laughs> just <more. laughs> Right? Right? And this woman with the issue of blood, she had been bleeding for 12 long years. She had had an illness, a sickness that she had gone to many, many doctors, the scripture tells us, and nobody could figure out what was happening with her. Nobody could give her a remedy. Nobody could treat her. So she continued having this health issue for 12 long years. And then all of a sudden, she hears about this man named Jesus who happens to be in town. And she says, well, all these other folks couldn't do anything. All the best doctors in the land couldn't heal me. All the best doctors told me to go lay down. They told me to take this. They told me to try this. I've spent all of my money that I have, and I am now without resource. How many of you know when you get to your wit's end sometime, the only thing you can do is call on who? Jesus. You've tried all that you can try. You should have put him first in the first place, right? We're all guilty of that. But when you've tried all that you can try and you've done all that you can do, sometimes I just got to call on Jesus. So she's out in the crowd. She's unfit or unhealthy, as scripture and scholars say, that she's not even supposed to be in public. She's not even supposed to be around people. She's an outcast at this point. But she takes a risk. She takes a huge risk. She is a bold. Y'all say bold. bold. She is being bold in this moment. She says, I don't care what I've got to do. I just need to get to Jesus. I don't know about y'all what situation you might be facing or that you might face in the future. But if you could just get to Jesus. You know in your mind somewhere that everything's going to be all right. Amen. So they're crowding around him. Y'all crowd on around him a little bit. There we go. They're crowding around him. She makes her way through the crowd. She's pressing. If you can just imagine this, because it says in her mind she thinks, if I can only touch the hem or the edge or the border of his garment, I will be made whole. She didn't even want to have a conversation with him. She knew the power that he had within him was so strong that if she could just get a little, just a little touch, a little brush, that she would be made well. So she risked everything, risked being called out, risked being called a name, risked being ostracized, risked being pushed out any further than she already was because of her condition. And she presses through the crowd, and she touches just the hem of his garment. Now, if you think about what Jesus might have been wearing at that time, probably a tunic or a robe or some type that may have gone close to the floor, potentially, right? So for her to touch the hem or the edge of his garment, likely she's not standing. Likely she's got to do one of these numbers right here. When life gets you so caught up and tangled up and tied up and bound up in mess, you've got to get to your knees and call on the one and reach out for the one who can do anything but fail. And what I love about this story is that before she even touched H-I-M, before she touched him, her mind, her spirit, her everything reached for the H-E-M, the hem of his garment. So before she even got there, she did point one today, which was what? Believe. She had faith. She activated her faith even before she got to the encounter with Jesus. And when she did it, it activated immediately. Somebody say immediately. Y'all say be bold. Be bold. Thank y'all so much. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
got to be bold in life situations. Be bold in pursuing your dreams. Be bold in going after the things that God has for you. Be bold in doing all that he's placed in your heart. Amen? Amen. That's point two. Here's our last point as we wrap up today. The third B is this. In life's moments where we're deciding to be or not to be, to live or not live, to declare and go after and pursue the dreams that God has for us, on this MLK weekend, when we're dreaming big and wanting to do all that God has in store, y'all say this, you got to be brilliant. Be brilliant. Be brilliant. Be brilliant. Y'all say shine. Shine. Yeah, it's got to shine on it, right? Yeah, you got to shine. So be brilliant. Be brilliant. Verses 26 and 27 says it like this. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. Y'all say up. Uh. He stood up. Well, how does this give us brilliance in this moment. How is this a moment where we can be brilliant? Well, if you look at the definition of the word brilliant, it's certainly to shine, to, to, to shimmer, to have a little glimmer, right? But it's also to stand up and to stand out. Be brilliant in pursuing the things that God has in store for you. I love this passage because in these two verses here, 26 and 27, it says this, everybody around said the boy looked like a corpse and said he was dead. Anybody ever wrote you off before? <laughs> said, no, nah, that don't make sense. You'll never accomplish that. No, nah, you grew up on that side of town. You won't ever achieve that. Oh, no, your mom and dad, they, they, they didn't go to college. They, no, no, no. You first generation, no, that's, that's not going to happen for you. Anybody ever been doubted in your ability to do something before. Yeah. I love how my friend Bree, when she's on her IG uh, lives and, and other spots, she's like, you know, hi, haters. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? right. So, yeah. Make your haters your motivators is one of our DJs used to say here in Atlanta. Right? <laughs> stand up and stand out. Even when folks try to speak negativity over your life, even when folks try to cast you out and say you have no chance of doing that thing, no chance of achieving or accomplishing the dream that God has placed in your heart. I love that Jesus took the boy by the hand, Jamal, and he lifted him up and he stood to his feet. Even when everybody else counted him out, even when everybody else said, nah, it doesn't look like he's alive, he's a corpse. He should be in the morgue somewhere. Somebody called the undertaker, come get him. He said, no, 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 wait, pause. I got this. Reminds me of the little girl, J. Iris, the ruler of the synagogue, came and said, hey, 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 Jesus. As a matter of fact, it was in the same story with the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus was on his way to J. Iris' house, and he gets stopped by the woman with the issue of blood. But I love how Jesus didn't forget about the other person. Somebody say, Jesus won't forget about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he goes to J. Iris' house. The leader of the synagogue, who probably has all kinds of resources available to him, Dean Greg could probably get the best treatments in the land for his daughter. But nothing would work. People counted her out too. Said she was dead. Said she was done. Matter of fact, they had started a funeral outside of the house. People were weeping and wailing and playing instruments. Anybody have given you a funeral before at your time? Uh, yeah. Don't write me off. What does it look like? Right? But Jesus steps into the situation, puts everybody out of the house, except his two closest disciples, Come on, somebody. Y'all missed that. When Jesus gets ready to minister to your situation, Ron, guess what? He puts everybody else out. Everybody else doesn't have nothing to do with your blessing, Kadeem. He's going to put them to the side. I, I got work to do here. I need to take Greg to this next level. I'm putting him over here. I'm putting her over there. And when he gets ready to minister to your situation, he's put everybody else out. He speaks. Takes her by the hand, like he did the boy. And he said, Talitha Kuma which means I say to you, arise, arise, arise. No matter who's written you off, arise. No matter what they said about you in high school, arise. No matter what they're looking like on IG, I designed you for a specific purpose, arise. Amen? Amen? Don't let folks write you off before your time. You are not dead. You are alive. 
be brilliant, shine, stand up, stand out. Let God do what God's going to do. Amen? Amen? The word says, let your good works do what? Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Let them shine so that others might see what you are doing, how you live, how you pray, how you move, how you breathe. See your relationship with God, and there will be a witness and glorify your Father too, which is in heaven. Amen? Y'all say, be brilliant. Be brilliant. Amen. So now we are. At time, I want to be respecter of that. And we just said our third point. So guess what? We're just about done. Amen? Amen. Let's recap really quickly. First point, y'all say believe. 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 God wants you to activate your faith and go after the things and the dreams that he's placed in your heart. The second point was be bold. Declare. Speak over your life. Speak over your situations. Command things to move and to shift and to get out as they need to get out, to come in as they need to come in. Amen? And the last one is what? Be brilliant. Shine while you pursue your dreams. Stand up. Don't let anybody write you off. You are well capable of doing everything that God has designed you to do. Your hair is a certain way for a certain reason. You dress a certain way for a certain reason. God has designed you how he's designed you because he wants you to stand out to somebody that you might not even know yet. Be that witness. Be brilliant in who God has created you to be. Amen? I want to share this clip with you real quick as we close, and uh, I think it'll bring it all together for us. Amen? Let's see if we can pull that up. Is preparing it for you. Don't worry about tomorrow. You just rest in this moment. My wife is addicted to the water. Addicted to water. Vacation as long as there's water involved. We went to Hawaii, and when we went to Hawaii, her co-worker said, you have to check out this Thai restaurant. She said, this Thai restaurant goes crazy. We get to the Thai restaurant. I'm talking about it was in the hood, lying out the door. We sit down in the Thai restaurant. He asked us, do you have any allergies? I was like, no, we good, bro, we good. He said, okay, cool. He said, you guys like chicken? We're like, yeah. He said, you like shrimp? He said, yeah. He said, say less, I got it from here. I said, I said but, 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 but we, we yelped it and we heard about, and they told us to get, and we wanted to try, and we, so my wife, I was like, let's just roll with it. So we just sat there. And then I noticed people who came in after us. They was getting their food before us. And so then I'm getting a little frustrated. You know what I mean? You know when you're a person of color, everything becomes racist quickly for you. <laughs> oh, this is what we doing. Oh, so even out here on the islands. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh, 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 okay, okay, okay. I was like, this is some foolishness. And, and I felt like Will Smith. I felt like my wife was giving me the eye, like, you better do something about this. I was like, no, no, babe, I was about to handle this. I was about to handle it. Excuse me. You know how we get really professional when we get about to tell somebody else, I'm sorry, excuse me. It appears to me to be that, the, that other people are being served and we've been on men. He said, be patient. I said, oh no, he didn't just be patient. He did not just be patient me. He came back out with entrees that we had never seen before. He came back out and when we got our food, people at other tables was looking at ours. People who got theirs before us were jealous that they didn't wait like us. Because they got what they picked. But what he was preparing for us, it wasn't even on the menu. God says, I need you to be patient and praise me. Because what I'm preparing for you, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of men what I got prepared for you. you Amen. 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 I 
love, love, love that clip because um, it, it, it reminds us, one, that certainly God has some things in store for us. Amen? Uh, but even in the things we talked about today and our being bold and our being brilliant and our believing, we've still got to pray and we've got to exercise a little bit of patience as well. Amen? Because there are things indeed that God has in store for us. We've got dreams that God places in our heart, but then there's some stuff he just kind of keeps under wraps, and he's going to surprise you with it. Like, oh, you, you weren't expecting that, were you? Boom. <laughs> Let me hit you on that, right? Oh, that promotion? Yep, I got you right there. Yep, yep, that bonus in your check you were looking for? Boom, right? God has got all kinds of great things in store. And so I want to challenge you to do the old school, old school, dating myself, but early 2000s prayer of Jabez. Amen? I want to read that back for us just as we close today. Because it illustrates that boldness. It illustrates that brilliance, right? It illustrates that belief. But it also illustrates that we've got to pray and talk to God all along our dream journey way. Amen? And it says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, and be bold, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. And I love this last line. So God granted him what he requested. As you go after God in 2023, as you go after the dreams that he's given you, believe, be bold, and be brilliant. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray for you. God, we are just so thankful for you. Thankful for your presence today. Thank you for the prayers of all the people who work here. Thank you for a word today that we pray will just settle in our hearts, settle in, in the soil of our hearts, God, that you would allow that seed uh, to just germinate, to, to spring up, and to, to bear fruit of something that we might be able to partake of. God, that we might be able to get a little nugget here, a little nugget there that can apply to the different dreams and situations in our life. Help us to have faith, to believe in all that you said you could do, to know, God, that you don't have a losing record at all. You've got only W's in your column and on your checklist. And we can take you up on that promise that we will win if we walk with you. God, that we can be bold in our prayers, that we be bold in our conversations with you, God, about what we're thinking and what we're hoping and what we're worried about and what we're concerned about. But also, God, that we can be brilliant and that with you on our side, you can indeed bring life to what might seem to others like a dead situation. God, to a situation that's on the ropes or on the rails, God, that you can restore it, you can bring it back, that even though others might sometimes count us out, that you never count us out. God, that we're not like a social media post where if we don't get enough likes or hearts, God, that sometimes folks take it down. God, you will never take us down. God, you posted us for a reason. God, help us to live into that. Help us to breathe into that. Help us to be all of that. God, this is our prayer on this King commemorative weekend. Help us to draw closer to you and be patient along the way. For eyes indeed have not seen and ears have not heard what you have in store for us. This prayer we lift up to you right now in the mighty and majestic name of your son Jesus. And all who would agree would simply say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Please join me in the prayers of the people. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, you will respond with your prayer. So please enter whatever posture of prayer is most comfortable to you. Almighty God, there is so much to thank you for. Thank you for the beginning of a new year, the beginning of a new semester, Thank you for another chance to live, another chance to serve you. Thank you for all you brought us through and did for us last year, and all you will do for us this year. Thank you for all the opportunities and blessings lying before us. God, we thank you for this beloved community, for each and every person here today. Thank you for all the current members and alumni of Voices, for all those who are a part of its legacy, and for all those who helped ensure it will remain on this campus forever. Thank you for Tolton Pace, his amazing message this morning. And thank you for everyone who answered the call to come and be here and worship with us today. God, let us see all that you've done and all that you're doing, and all that you will do with fresh eyes, so that we can praise you like we never have before. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for King Week, for Martin Luther King Jr., and all the other le leaders who paved the way for us. Let the legacy of their work and accomplishments inspire us to believe just like he did, that with you, nothing is impossible. That what you've done in the past, you can do again. Increase our faith, God. Let us trust and believe that you have plans to prosper us, and that those plans are so much greater than any we could think of on our own, even if we don't see it right now. And God, let us not just believe, but be bold bold enough to speak life over our situations, bold enough to follow you despite the cost, bold enough to fight for justice, bold enough to face danger and opposition, bold enough to stand up for others because we know that you are with us and we don't have to be afraid. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, finally, let us be brilliant let us arise. Let us do your will. Show us the power of prayer, that prayer changes things, that you have the final say. Let us stay connected to you and our community. Let us be patient. And let us accomplish more than we could ever imagine and bring glory to your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer aloud. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses, as we have forgiven those who have trespassed against us. 
Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're officially back because Jonna has done a prayers for the people. It's one of my favorite parts of the service every week. Thank you for that beautiful prayer. I have just a few announcements for us this morning. First, if you will let us know that you're here by scanning this QR code, if you have a smartphone, it'll send you to just a short link where we can get your name and email and your relation to the university. Um, if you are um, new, we will make sure that you get added to our e-news list so that you can stay up to date with what's going on in our office. Which leads me to our second announcement, that there are a number of activities taking place on campus this week and at the Oxford campus um, in relation to our King Week. And you can read all of that, all about those and more in our um, office's e-newsletter. Uh, voices rehearsals this semester will be Mondays and Fridays in the Teaching Chapel at Candler. And so um, anyone, any students are invited to join Voices even if you um, did not participate in the fall semester. Lastly, for students, applications for WISE pre-orientation program, um, student coordinators are open. And I wanted to make sure that announcement got out today because we have the two students who helped start this program in the room, Jonna and Sandra. So if you're interested in that position, they can tell you all the ins and outs of what that looks like and help plan our welcoming interfaith and spiritual exploration pre-orientation that will take place in August this year. Um, as always, everyone is invited downstairs to lunch afterwards, and so we hope that you'll join us. But we have a special announcement this morning, and so I'd like to invite up Dean Greg McGonigal and Mari Allams at this time. Yeah, sure. All right, everyone. How is everybody doing? Good. How's everyone doing? Good. I guess we in church, we'll say, praise the Lord, saints. <laughs> what I want to do real quick, uh, I'm, I'm standing here to say thanks, but I'm going to do something different. There's not many chances that I get to do this. I'm going to invite all of the former Voices members to come up front as quickly as you can. <laughs> Thought there were more, but this is good. Hey, Miss Pace, see you out there. Good to see you. That's Totem's wife up there. I think he said something earlier, but Marie. Uh, what I want to do real quick, I'm so forever grateful for the generosity of the community to give to this program, Voices of Inner Strength. But I believe it would be better if I just go down the line, say your name, what year you graduated? <laughs> One of your favorite moments of voices and what you're doing now. Actually, what you're doing now, then one of your favorite memories from voices. All right? Let's start with Lauren. This is one of our former presidents. So this is Lauren. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Lauren Benton. I graduated in 07. One of my favorite memories and voices. Oh, there are a lot of them. Uh, we went on tour every spring break. And I remember after the storms, and I think it was 06, 07, um, we went down to New Orleans and did our service trips. And that was one of our best trips, I think, that we took in my four years um, because we got to sing and minister to people as you all are doing, right, and will continue to do in your years here at uh, Emory. And I'm currently uh, at Case Western. I'm teaching there now, so. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. My name is Natalie, generally Kirk. I was Natalie Hill at the time, class of 01. Um, I am currently here in the metro Atlanta area. I'm a private practice owner, uh, music therapy, and I also work in Fulton County School System, uh, mental health and the arts. Um, one of my favorite memories from Voices, I think was more so the, it was the practices. Um, I was a music major uh, and chemistry major while I was here, so I got to be around a lot of music and a lot of ensemble things, but it was the family and the fellowship that we had in the practices. And hearing 
the musical things that happen at the time during those practices. It's a lot, once in a lifetime experience at each of those practices. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Keisha Hampton. Um, I graduated class of 2000. <laughs> Um, right now, I, I practice in um, the Atlanta area. I'm, I'm an optometrist. And some of the favorite moments, um, both you guys took the answer to the tours. The, the um, rehearsals were always fun. But I remember uh, one of my favorite tours, well, it was a couple of them, California, and we went to St. Thomas. Those were like great, great, great tours. I mean, great, great family um, feel um, to the choir. So. Hi, everybody. I'm Mitzi. Williams, um, class of 2000. Uh, yay! Um, I have so many great memories of voices. So I am currently a neurologist. I own my own private practice um, in the Smyrna area. And I think my favorite moments were office hours. We would all cram into Maury's little bitty office. <laughs> and um, one of my uh, classmates, um, Angelette, would be on the keyboard. And we would just be all up in there together, trying to come up with songs. And I think my second favorite moment was when we recorded our album, yeah. Voices in My Head. So <laughs> that's hard to find. But um, we recorded our album. And we just spent a lot of time hanging out um, during that tour and learning from each other musically. And, and so it was a really great time. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dechelle Taylor. I'm most affectionately known in this community as Peaches. Um, and um, I was here between 89 and 93, and I led the choir two years that I was here. And um, one of my most fondest memories is when we got to go out of the country. We went to Jamaica and we went to Bermuda. Um, and it was an incredible trip, an opportunity for us to minister to other people, um, visiting schools and churches and just being around the children. That was like just memorable. Um, I am currently a CSR and philanthropy consultant. I'm also um, a wellness advocate. I work with families to help them have natural solutions to their health journey. Um, and I just, I am just in awe of um, the opportunity to be part of blessing voices to be here. It was definitely a staple for me um, being here because I'm from New York originally. So voices was my family um, outside of a number of other things I was able to do on campus, but certainly love the opportunity to be here and just to see all of you and congratulations. Man, um, very similar, uh, again, Tolton Pace, uh, class of 2000. Uh, from the college and then O2 from public health. Um, it's been, man, voices was everything to me. Um, the reason why I'm a preacher now uh, is because of voices. Um, I think God was shaping me and molding me in that moment. I'm about to cry. I'm not going to do it. <clears throat> um, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where as a kid, you get baptized because everybody's like, hey, going up, you know, it's that thing. But when I came to college here at Emory, even though I was from Atlanta, voices became that, that kind of faith incubator for me that really shaped my journey. And so I'm super, super grateful for that. The Bermuda trip, uh, man, first island trip running along the beach was everything <laughs> amazing. Um, and the recording the album, like Mitzi, like spring of my senior year, I mean, psh, man, just the producers that you brought in that not only wrote and produced music for us, but they actually ministered to us. And they taught us like how to worship and the meaning behind worship. Uh, so you can only imagine like what that did for us just in terms of, again, just being grounded in faith. So, Again, to Peach's point, no brainer to, to give back and to be able to help voices be sustained forever. So, thank you. Y'all give them a hand. Thank you. I, like I thought that was important because we are voices, stand up voices, current voices members. Yes. And the journey continues, the legacy continues. And we want to say thank you to all of you. I am not going to start saying names. We have many of the donors in the place today, and heartfelt thanks to you. Um, I can't say enough about this program. I, I wanted to leave several times, and I'm still here. And so <laughs> sometimes you look, you say, okay, God, I'll just, I'll be still. <laughs> and it's, it's been a blessing because as you can see, the success around the room, I'm a part of that, and they're a part of me. And we continue to grow, and, and, to, and we continue to have our own destinies. But at the same time, we all so, seem to come back together. You know, I still talk to many members, 
And they're so good. Where's Peaches? Look at Peaches. We not Peaches is symbolic because she's the first year that I started as the the actual choir director for Voices. So I, it's so good to see you here. It brings us back so many memories. And a few weeks ago, I got a chance to play with Lewin Felder, who was Luther's, Luther Felder was the first chaplain that I came under. Yeah, so it's just been a blessing to see you all. But thank you so much. We're going to continue. We're going to make you proud. Dr. Henderson, we're going to make you proud. And uh, we're going to continue this journey. Thank you so much. Again, from the bottom of my heart, I bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maury. I just want to add my thanks as well. Um, it's wonderful to have so many Voices alums in the house today. Um, certainly, uh, Tolton, Reverend Pace, thank you so much for your beautiful message. Thank you also not only for uh, the words of belief and boldness and brilliance, but the way you live those in your life. So, so grateful for you. I uh, just have a quick prayer of dedication, um, if you join me in prayer, as we uh, dedicate this, this new endowment, this new fund we have for Voice of Inner Strength. Holy Spirit, we give thanks today for the beautiful voices of Inner Strength Gospel Choir that has given great witness to your abundant love and amazing grace, your gifts among generations of Emory students. We know that Voices has been a community of spirit, of music, and of solidarity, supporting students on their journeys through Emory and blessing the wider campus, the city of Atlanta, and beyond, serving as a foundation for our alumni to go forth in faith and values to do justice and goodness in our world. We give thanks for Maury Allums, his decades of dedicated service, as well as the choir directors, the deans, the colleagues, all who have supported the choir over this time. For the alumni leaders like Angelette Tucker and Melissa Bauman, who have stepped forward and reconnected the alumni family to make Voices truly a community of inclusion and belonging. Today we rejoice at the generosity of those many alumni and friends who have gathered together their gifts and their prayers to make voices last forever at Emory, to bless students and all who have the joy to hear them. Holy One, each of us has an inner voice that is strong and can be strengthened by your grace and by the circle of this community. May we hear that voice calling us today. May it grow stronger through the blessing of music and fellowship so that we may be strengthened to do your justice and goodness in this world. We ask your blessings on this new endowment as we dedicate it May it always be a blessing to the Emory community and those we serve. Amen. Amen. Hello. Oh, there we go. Okay, so this last song that we're singing is a, a little bit more... Um, worship oriented so we would love if you could stand with us uh, okay so there there are two parts that we need to teach because we want you to sing it with us as well all right so the first part sounds like this i'll praise you lord with all my soul with all my soul I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise with my mouth. I'll praise with my life. With everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise you, Lord, with all my soul, with all my soul. I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise with my mouth. I'll praise with my life. With everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord. Can you sing it? With all my soul, I'll praise, you, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise with my mouth. I'll praise with my life. With everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord. One more time, I'll praise you, Lord. With all my soul, with all my soul, I'll praise you, Lord. I'll praise with my mouth. I'll praise with my life. With everything I do, I'll praise you, Lord. The next part is super easy. Oh, 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 o
can actually sing the song. Come on, let's just sing something beautiful to him. Whatever's on your heart, whatever's on your mind, just sing it. So God, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you, Lord. Thank y'all so much again for your prayers and for your presence today. Voices, thank you as always. Uh, really quickly as we close, and Maddie's going to come up for the benediction, I uh, wanted to acknowledge a special group that is here with us today, um, and that is none other than my wife, Crystal, my son, Roman, my brother, Dana's here. My sister, who's an Emory alum, would be here, but she's traveling today. And my mom, who's not here, she's not feeling well. My mother-in-law is here, my sister-in-law. So all of my family, uncle, cousin, everybody, like, raise your hand. Up top right there, right here on the front row. Amen. Thank you all so, so much. And our adopted child, Ashley, is here as well. <laughs> yep. So again, just to everybody, thank you so much for your presence. It means quite a bit. You don't have to come up. You don't have to support. Uh, but the fact that you do, whoo, 
means a lot. So thank you. I'm going to go. <laughs> I want to give Taunton one last thanks for being here. Thank you for all the students who participated today. Um, this is a taste of what our community is like. In the fall semester, we started using this prayer as our benediction. Um, we say it communally. I'll read it once, and then we'll say it all together. And this is our hope for a beloved community here at Emory, that we will live out the words in this benediction. So receive it, and then we'll say it all together as our energy into the world. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, injustice, starvation, and war so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. Let's say this together. May God bless us with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that we may live deep within our hearts. May God bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that we may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, injustice, starvation, and war, so that we may reach out our hands to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless us with enough foolishness to believe we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claim cannot be done. Amen. Go in peace. Join us downstairs for lunch if you'd like. Amen. <laughs>